Turns out Americans aren't as knowledgeable as they think they are. About 25% of Americans don't know that the Earth revolves around the sun. I believe the Earth revolves around the sun and that the sun doesn't revolve around the Earth. Don't ask me how I know that, right? Because I've never perceived it directly. I sort of take it on faith, and yet I call it knowledge. And, and this isn't just a modern phenomenon either. So in 1943, only 25% of college freshmen knew that Abraham Lincoln was president during the Civil War. Oklahoma State did a uh, survey, and it, its Department of Agricultural Economics did a survey a few years ago, and they found that over 80% of Americans support the idea that GMO, genetically modified foods, should be labeled as such. They should be labeled as produced with genetic engineering. This seems like a perfectly reasonable um, thing to support, until you find out that they also thought that foods containing DNA should have mandatory labels. So it, it makes you wonder what the thinking process was that led them to the first conclusion. Just uh, in case you're unaware, it, it's hard to find foods that don't contain DNA. This feeling that we understand things better than we do has become a real problem, I think, right? And it explains the heat and vociferousness of some of the debate that we see in politics. This has been observed for years. This is a quote. It is better to remain silent at the risk of being thought a fool than to talk and remove all doubt of it. <laughs> Churchill said the best argument against democracy is a five-minute conversation with the average voter. And another of your countrymen, Bert Bertrand Russell, pointed out that this failure of understanding is one of the causes of extremism. The opinions that are held with passion are always those for which no good ground exists. What is it about people that causes them to think they understand things better than they do? And the answer I'd like to suggest is that we, we suffer from it because we fail to distinguish what other people know from what we know. So other people understand cap and trade in, in carbon emissions. I may not, but the fact that other people do makes me feel like I do. It's a kind of knowledge conflation. We conflate other people's knowledge with ours. And as a result, when we're thinking about the mind, instead of thinking about it as something that happens between the ears, we should think about it as something that happens within a community, because we depend on each other's knowledge to a great extent. Here's a, a little study I did with a student at Brown named Nat Rabb, which shows how knowing that other people understand things make us feel like we understand. So in this experiment, we invented the phenomenon of glowing rocks. And we told people that the scientists who discovered them ha have not yet explained them. They don't yet understand how these glowing rocks work. How well do you understand them? And people gave the natural response. I don't understand them at all, because they don't. They were just introduced to them. Consider this other condition. Everything's the same, but in this case, we say, the scientists have thoroughly explained how these growing rocks work. They fully understand how they work. How well do you understand how they work? And here are the data. So the first thing to notice is nobody has a great sense of understanding here on a one to seven scale. In one condition, when the scientists don't understand, their judgments aren't much higher than one, right? But when the scientists do understand, their judgments are almost twice as large, right? It's just a little bump. They're not saying, oh, I fully understand glowing rocks, but they have a sense of understanding that they didn't have before. Imagine if 100 people around you are saying, I understand why Hillary is crooked, or I understand um, how the economy will benefit if Britain leaves the European Union. Presumably, if you have all of those people and people close to you, you're going to have a sense of understanding yourself. I don't think the answer to this problem is education, right? Or it's not simply education. What I'm talking about is a basic um, aspect of human psychology, something that's true of Americans and British people and liberals and conservatives that's true of everyone. And we can't just educate our way out of it. There are other kinds of things that we can think about. So in the world of financial decision making, there's a lot of evidence that if you want to get people to say, 
um, save for their retirement, which most people think is a good idea, uh, the way to do it is not to teach them about the benefits of saving, but rather at the point of decision to give them the requisite information to get them to invest. This is called just-in-time education. There are important implications for leadership here. The value of a leader is proportional to their ability to use the community to find solutions to problems. So ignorance may be bliss. Um, and the truth is, illusions can be pretty nice too, right? Voltaire said that. Illusions are the first of all pleasures. But they can be problematic. They're problematic when my sense of understanding, like my sense of understanding who to vote for, is based on the understanding of the people around me, and their sense of understanding is based on the understanding of the people around them, so that in essence, there's no real understanding, and we're all voting based on a house of cards. I love the way Robert Armstrong put this in the Financial Times. We imagine ourselves as rugged cognitive individualists, growing our own intellectual food and living in mental houses built with our own hands. This is a dangerous era.